It's boots and it has little steel on the outside of it. He's fucking kicking me in my ankles. Uh, boom, boom. He's kicking me with these steel toe boots. Y'all, y'all never believe I have Jeremy in my hands. Six weeks old. Six week old Jeremy in my hands. He actually cracked Jeremy's skull at six weeks when he beat me and Jeremy. He cracked Jeremy's skull. I don't have a mom. I don't have a dad. I don't have a home. How am I gonna, you know? Like, God, how? how like, how? Like, And for this. All right, so hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another video. It's early, early in the morning. Oh, guys, I wanted to do a story time. I want, and I feel like it's the perfect time because my kids are sleeping. Don't really want to speak about this, like you know, while my family's up. Oh, hold on. Alright y'all, so I'm gonna continue the story now. <laughs> I'm in my baby's room because he doesn't understand, so we Gucci. Right, my boom boom, say good morning. He just woke up. I wasn't even planning on doing the story time with him here, but alright y'all, so this is gonna be <sighs> calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. I'm always afraid to talk about things like this, and every time I do a story time, I be scared AF and I do that shit anyway. And uh, y'all, this has been such a long time. It's been so many years. I can't believe I actually didn't tell the full detailed story on it. Like sometimes like I'm live, like I'll sometimes like bring it up and say little things here and there. But today you guys are going to get the story, okay? Now, a lot of people, if you follow me, I have six kids. Okay. My husband is not Jalen and Jeremy's biological dad. A lot of you guys do know that. A lot of you guys don't. But most of you guys are so shocked to find out when y'all do, you know? I was in a relationship with Jalen and Jeremy's dad for three years, you guys. This is how we met. I was living with my sister. We were living at a trailer park at the time. I came back from South Africa to the United States um, like right when everybody was just trying to rebuild New Orleans because of Hurricane Katrina. It was like damaged. I came back when it was damaged. So in any event, I came from South Africa back to my siblings, which were here in the United States, three of my siblings, and I lived with my sister. <clears throat> so life happened, you guys, you know. Um, I ended up, me and my sister ended up getting into a huge, huge argument and I ended up um, having to leave. Wait, that's for later. So with Jalen and Jeremy's dad, I was working at Burger King at the time, you guys. And he lived like across the street over like five minutes away from Burger King. So he used to come and get food there all the time. And when he met me, he just always used to compliment me all the time and he used to ask me my name. I gave him my number. Now let me tell you guys, I gave a lot of people my number. I'm a very, very nice, kind person. I don't even know how to say no. I wasn't attracted to him just like I wasn't like when I met my husband I wasn't attracted to him I gave him my number I, I just like it's the kindness in me it's the niceness in me it doesn't necessarily mean that I wanted to date the person but I know obviously that he liked me and it kept coming back and it kept coming back right and um I ignored his calls and like I didn't you know I just kind of like I don't really know him like that so one day he came to Burger King and he like drove I was working through the drive-thru and he texted me and he was like, don't work too hard. No, don't work too hard. Or And then he said, he told me, what did he say? This is how he got me to have a conversation with him. He was like, if you don't want me to talk to you, just say that. If you don't, if you, if you want me to leave you alone, just say that. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm so secure. Here's my social security number. So I'm like, no. So he comes in Burger King because he's watching me like mop the lobby. And um, he comes in with his little pajamas are with like holes in it or whatever and you know he stays there for a couple of minutes he ends up leaving uh fast forward i lived with my sister in the trailer park we get into this huge argument i have to leave and um who do i call i don't have nobody y'all who do i call him i'm like can you come pick me up now he's been asking me to come over over and over and over and over again right so and we've been communicating at this time now i went to go visit him a couple of times you know i came back home you know blah 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 so um yeah, so he comes and pick me up. He's in Mississippi at the time. He has to like drive so far. He has to drive like a couple of hours until he's able to even come get me. So I'm just sitting there. He eventually ends up picking me up. I end up moving in with the nigga. I, he picked me up and I don't think I've ever went back. I didn't go back to my sister's after that. And, you know, long story short, I'm going to zoom past this, you guys. But um, he ended up like purposely getting me pregnant, knew what he was doing, kept talking about it before and I was like, before he did it, I was in school, I was in 11th grade, you guys, I ended up having to leave school, I was pregnant and there's other things towards that, but that's another day for another, that's another story for another, 
okay i always get so deep into things i <sighs> hate that he was abusive towards me he was abusive to me i had black eyes and, but my stubborn ass always used to be like i didn't take that shit he would cheat on me all the stuff and my stubborn ass i would like be like oh no you did that like blah, blah, blah. i would you know say something and he'd be smart he would beat my ass for saying something at times and he would drink a lot so like i don't know if, like the alcohol had like a something to do with that but i'm gonna tell you about this one time y'all he ended up like not even giving a damn about me because i was such just a yes man i stayed at home i was so respectful so many dudes try to talk to me and i never ever looked that way i was very very faithful i just wanted to be loved and also i was scared and didn't have nobody nowhere else to go and i was living like in a very very dangerous spot like in the, when i drove up y'all he had to, when I, he first brought me home he freaking takes his gun out and he was like come on and he tells me like i got um, i got you and takes his gun out to walk upstairs i'm like mm -hmm. but you can look at the neighborhood and tell like i'm scared so anyway he's coming home he's cheating on me i'm gonna tell you guys about the time where he um yeah why i slept outside um he goes to work and he comes back and he leaves he doesn't say nothing to me doesn't have like doesn't have no remorse and i'm home with jaylen i had just had jaylen she was like a couple of months old and um Yeah, so I was, I was living with him and, um, I'm so confused, somebody's right there. What was I saying? What was I saying? Yeah, anyway, and by the way, we were living with so many people. We were living with so many men. Our house was available to the whole entire hood. If you didn't have nowhere to stay, you can come there. The door's not locked. It was very, very unsanitary. It was a very dirty place. There was roaches everywhere. Carpet was dirty and stinky, and I lived there for a long time with a lot of men coming in and out. But I stayed in my little room to myself. I've always been very reserved. I've always been who I am now. I've just been put in, like, some bad situations, you know? So, um, yeah, this one day, I'm fucking sick of it. He doesn't, he comes home, he leaves me with the baby, he just, he goes to work, comes home, leaves, says he's going to car shows, but he's cheating with all the dirtiest, with the dirtiest girls in those in their places you know unbeknownst to me at the time i really didn't know who this man was by the way because he is nasty <laughs> i didn't even know the half of it you hear me i didn't even know the half of it so um this one day he comes home from work he comes and he sets his clothes out every single time i know when to go get in the shower i know he's about to leave i'm so pissed off i'm hurt every single day i'm crying i'm like please stop please stop please stay with me can i come with you or like please what's like what are you doing you know it's either he's hitting on me cheating on me or leaving hitting on me cheating on me and am i please don't go please like stop i'm gonna do the please don't like uh, please don't do this to me i'm banging my head against fucking walls i'm crying i'm asking god why i'm wanting to not even live y'all so one day he comes home and i'm like yeah operation about to get that nigga back he comes home he puts his clothes out he gets in the fucking shower so as soon as i make an operation for it i get dressed y'all i'm like you know i kept drilling every single day i wait till it gets almost out the shower i leave you on the bed and he goes in the room he starts getting dressed and i fucking run out i leave and i don't come back for the rest of the day so i leave i leave him for this one time i leave y'all i end up coming back why did I do that? Why did I leave? Why did I leave? I come back, y'all. I'm locked out of the house. I'm begging on the fucking door. Now, I don't feel like at this time, I don't feel like I feel very alone. I'm very in a space to where whatever. I don't feel comfortable calling anybody. I don't feel nobody's actually going to come straight to my rescue because honestly, a lot of shit has happened to me in life. I didn't really have anybody really come to my rescue like that, just to be honest. I have people that love me around me and they whatever. And maybe it's even me maybe it's like me thinking that oh i don't have help anyway why would i it's not and then secondly it's not gonna be any better over there <laughs> like what the fuck i'm gonna call and be like come pick me up this is happening to me and i go over there and some other shit happened to me okay like my whole life after my mother died after my mama died my soul died y'all will never believe i'm knocking on the door i'm banging on the fucking door they have like 
six men in the house. Now I'm close to so many of them. I've done built a relationship with so many of them. He told him, don't open the door, y'all. I was knocking on the door. Mm. One of the friends was so fucking disrespectful to me. Every single time me and him got into an argument, this dude would get into an argument with me and he would call me a B-side, B-I-T-C-H. And my baby daddy wouldn't do nothing. He would be like, man, F this, F this B, J. F this B, F this bitch. Like, fuck up, like, man, fuck, come on, let's go, fuck up. Like, bitch, he'll, be, he'll, he'll come in my face this fucking tall. He's coming in my face being offended at my motherfucking relationship. Why? Ironing everybody's, and then on top of that, you stay, you bus boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I should've, if I would've fucking known what I know now, if I was today years old, I would've told you, if you don't get your, you sitting here ironing every nigga's clothes for work, sir, in here. You ironing the whole hood's clothes and hanging it to them, and now you feel like he's having an argument with his baby mama, you gotta be in it? You ain't that, you, who are, go fucking iron. Go on these pants and shut the fuck up. How about that? If I was today years old, I wouldn't have been crying at the time and I would have told him exactly what I told him. Like, maybe you don't get your... <sighs> Boom. So this same exact dude that I'm just talking about now, I have so many stories about him. He's fucking opening the door, cracking the door open. Now, the door, people is knocking on the door all night because anybody's allowed there. It's the only time the door is locked. Now, the door is allowed to be locked tonight because Renee's locked out and Renee's not allowed to be in there because this bitch left and who said she could leave and then leave me? <laughs> now, my baby is in there. He's in there with Jalen and all these men, y'all. Nobody's opening. Six men, six grown ass men that I've built relationships. Other ones I was close to than the others. They sat there and watched me. I sat on... So I sat on the porch with me out of embarrassment because this traffic of the whole hood coming in and out the door. I didn't want to show everybody that I'm fucking locked out and not allowed in the house. I didn't feel comfortable to call anyone. I didn't feel like I had a safe place to go to to where I, people wouldn't be irritated with me or, you know. Let me tell you, when you're in a position like that, this is what I feel like. When you're in a position like that, it's like literally like a homeless person. Y'all know what y'all do to homeless people. What we do with a homeless person. We're going to walk right past them. We're going to look at them as if they don't matter. And we're gonna and we're gonna whatever. That's how people literally treat you and look at you. You can run into a million fucking problems in the world. You call for help, they're gonna be like, "That's her life. This is what life handed her. That's she deserves that. That's who she. That's who her life is." So it's not really like, "Oh my God," like you feel like somebody really wants you. Like, I, you know what? I want help for you. I'm gonna take you out of the situation. I'm gonna help you, and I'm gonna make sure that I help you and keep you safe. So I'm fucking. Sitting outside, y'all, it's getting dark and later and later, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Now, they have this lady lives next door. Her name is Miss Angie, which is another, another friend, a mom of another friend that's in the house all the time. And Miss Angie comes outside and she speaks to me at nighttime. She's like, oh, hey, what you doing? I'm like, yeah. She's like, what you sitting out here for? I'm like, oh, just sitting, just chilling. I didn't want to tell her. I'm not allowed in the house. All the men got me put out. Like, the men doesn't want to open the door for me. It's like, all men, grown-ass men with my little ass, y'all. I'm fucking... 85 pounds soaking wet in a dangerous ass neighborhood and he left me out there She comes out and she's like, oh, okay. She goes back in. She goes to her bed. Y'all I'm fucking so scared or whatever. I'm like open the door. I'm banging all night Every time somebody's not walking up. I get up and I bang. I'm like open the door. Please open the door I go to where his window is at where we, our room was And I start fucking throwing rocks and stuff So I threw a rock and the fucking window goes Flashes. The window smashes, right? And I get so fucking scared. I'm like, oh my God, he's been drinking. He's going to get mad. He's going to come out here and beat me. So I'm like, fuck, I get scared. I'm like, oh my God. So I run around back in the front and I'm like, kind of like not going to the door because I'm scared that he's probably going to burst out and come beat my ass for breaking his window. But he doesn't come out. Nobody comes out. So I'm sitting. Y'all will never believe who walks up. Y'all will never believe who walks up the stairs. And every time somebody knocks, that same punk beat mother effer opens the door, cracks the door up and looks to see what it is, make sure it's not me and be like, oh, come in. You know who walks at the door? The bitch he was cheating on me with walks past me, knocks on the door with his sister. He peeps and they are welcomed in. While I'm, my daughter's in there, my baby dad is in there and this girl that is literally effing my man and calling him up. And listen, I'm so stupid. This girl was calling him constantly. Now, this girl, let me tell you, ooh, juicy. This girl 
was sleeping with more than him in that house. They were going to her house and sleeping with her. She was sleeping, they were sleeping with more than him in that house and he was, I don't know, but she was crazy about him. It was something about him and I honestly believe it had a lot to do with me. But oh, the flock of girls that comes when Renee, when the baddest <laughs> come around. You know, they wanna show me that they can, you know? And they did, and she did. She showed me she could take it because she needed that and he, he had that. And that wasn't for me anyway, so you know, now that I know that. But anyway, she walks up, I'm feeling so humiliated. My heart is fucking dropping. I'm like, oh my God, I wonder if she knows I'm put out. It's embarrassing. Because me and her exchange words, because she's constantly calling and texting. He's like, where you at? Wait, she's crazy over him. Like wanting to, wanting to him, you know? For what? The gag is today, she is married. She's married to the person who, his friend who was living there, who was calling me the BITCH. Today she's married to him and he's the father to her kids. Not biologically, she's, she's taking care of her kids. They're married now. They're married and whatever. After she done smashed all his homies, he done turned around and went to go marry her. And fine to each his own, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. You was over there worried about me. You married to somebody who all your homies know what she. Let me, this is not about that. <laughs> this is not about that. Anyways, y'all, I'm fucking sitting on the porch all night long. These men was up all night drinking, smoking, doing whatever they doing, whatever they doing in that. People walking in all hours of the night because it was that type of house. Da, 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 da. And... Da, da. I sat on the fucking porch all fucking night. Until the morning, the lady next door, Miss Angie, comes back out. She says, I'm sitting in the same position, same spot, same clothes. I'm looking fucking exhausted. I done fell asleep on the fucking thing. I woke up because I'm scared I fell asleep. You know what could have fucking happened to me? My little 85 pound ass soaking wet. But he did that because he could. He did, and everybody did that because they could. I didn't have no mom, I didn't have no dad to come be like, don't do that. I didn't have nobody that they would suffer consequences from. And then I didn't call no, I, I didn't even fucking take up for myself or feel like I could call the cops or anything like that. People would probably be like, why didn't you call the cops? I can't tell you. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I didn't feel like nobody can save me. I felt that was my life. Life has been like that to me, so what, what the f I just like, I felt like that was supposed to happen. I felt like this is what happens to me. This is what happens when you, when you me. This is what happens when you me. One of those men that went in the house was, is my kid's godfather. I'm gonna tell you how I ended up breaking up. I kept going back, I kept being abused. Y'all, I'm embarrassingly gonna tell you right now, I had to go to my brother's house because he just wasn't, he was screwing over me so bad. I was being abused so bad, I went to my brother's house briefly. And I remember being so like miserable and depressed there and just feeling so alone and like I just didn't have nobody to understand me. And it has nothing to do with no one. I was just so fucking alone mentally in the corner. I was just like in a room and it was me and my daughter and I called him one day. I'm like, please, can you come pick me up? He's like, no. And he knew that I was always going to be there. He knew that I was always going to be there. I'm not going nowhere. I don't have nobody. <laughs> Where I'm going to go? Who want me? She got a child. My child. Who's going to want her? I could get her and I could get anybody else that I want. And then the sad part about it is everybody that he was effing around with was so fucking dirty. Look like, no offense, but it was so like, I should not be in the mix of that. Y'all do what y'all do, but that is not fucking me. I didn't even know none of that. I didn't even know none of that. Yeah, so... What was I gonna say? Oh, another thing is, I remember going, being so vulnerable, I remember going to the, um, this is so personal. I remember being so, I remember being so fucking green, y'all. I was literally like stuck in a little 15 year old mind, like street wise, like as far as street smart. Like, you know, knew nothing. My mom died when I was 15, I was just like, 
Nobody taught me nothing. I don't know how to be a fucking adult. Nobody, and nobody took their time out to say, to teach me things, to, oh, this is how you, or whatever. Oh, no, don't, like, you know. It's just like, I was just kind of like an orphan child in my, what I felt like. I felt like an orphan person. You know how people treat orphan kids. They don't treat them the same like they treat their kids. So, um, um, yeah, I go to the doctor this one time and they're like, you got something. So it was a, a sexually transmitted disease. Well, I don't know what it was gonorrhea or something i didn't never heard of it before in my life i don't know what the fuck it is never had an std never slept slept with i can count on one hand of how many men i slept with in my entire life i'm not i don't get around i don't need my whole hand to even count how many men i slept with and i was only sleeping with him at the time i didn't know what this was i'm like wait what i didn't even like my heart drops y'all will never believe y'all will never believe i went home and i kind of i don't know if i told him or not i blamed myself I thought something was wrong with me. I'm like, if I go and say I have this, it's me that has it. So how the fuck is it anyone else's fault? I didn't even fucking think to say to myself like this man is doing dirty things. What are you doing? I didn't think, I didn't know what the fuck it was. I didn't know where it came from, y'all. I went home being afraid to tell him as if I gave it to me. As if I gave it to me. I didn't give it to me. You know? And I didn't tell him, I was just so quiet about it. I was like, so scared. I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna think, what are they gonna, I'm today years old, I'm like, girl. Like, I really just wanna fucking give the young me a hug. To be honest, like, I literally just wanna fucking, that's why I'm so protective over my motherfucking self and with anybody. Y'all know how I am, you know how I protect the old bitch because it comes from fucking somewhere. Nobody's gonna hurt her the way I allowed them to hurt, I allowed them to hurt her when she was younger, you know? The inner me, the inner child. She's still there, she's still there, she's still very alive. And she comes out every now and then, she's very vulnerable. And she needs me. And if ain't nobody gonna, else gonna value her, guess who is? Her. So, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, so next story. This is how we broke up. Y'all know, you know, I'm with my husband now. I was with my husband. When me and my baby dad broke up, I was pregnant with Jeremy now, my second child, which is also my baby daddy's kid. I'm pregnant with Jeremy. We broke up because he's doing the same shit and I'm dating Deval now. I moved to Baton Rouge and everything for a couple of weeks. I'm dating Deval. He's so nice to me. I met him at the club. We're like literally just friends more than anything. I'm not even worried about sexually with him like that. And we did. But he wasn't even so like he, when I said no, it was no, he respected me. He just wanted to be around me. Did he loved me? It was something so different. But I was pregnant with another man's baby. I carried on a full relationship on with Deval, whatever. He was telling people that he has another baby on the way. It wasn't even his. And he's like, I have another baby. His family was looking at him weird. Maybe that's the beginning where they started hating me at. Eventually me and Deval ends up breaking up because it's like, Deval was still like, not, he wasn't doing bad things, but he was still like, I like found excuses and I didn't even like, he done one thing too wrong to me, I'm leaving because why the fuck am I dealing with another man doing something that I, like, you know, it even wasn't that big, like, you know, but it's like, you think I'm gonna have two men that's gonna make me feel so, I wasn't in love with Deval, it was easy for me to leave, I wasn't like, I didn't have that emotional connection to him yet. I loved his company. He made me feel so comfortable. He made me feel safe. However, I didn't have that deep connection with him yet. So I'm like, I was out. I ended up, maybe it was an excuse to go back to my kid's dad because I still did love him. I ended up going back to my kid's dad while I was pregnant with Jeremy. I have my baby. And, um, hey baby. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. You want to sit on your sofa? Hold on, let me give you something. Good toy. Yeah, so, um, where am I? Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Um, and, yeah, Jeremy ends up fast forward only a couple of weeks later, yo. I'm starting to miss Deval because this man is being this man. He's better, and I'm, I'm like, oh my God, like, like, I would just want to call Deval, but we left, like, off on a bad note. I left him, and I'm like, you know, I just wasn't ready. So I just didn't feel comfortable calling him, because I'm like, I'm not going to call him, because he's not he's going to be like, bitch, who? Don't call me no more. I just knew he was going to play me. And, um, 
Yeah, so I eventually man Duvall starts talking again. We start texting because this man is cheating on me constantly and now Duvall is my friend. You know, I'm looking for comfort him, I'm calling him and you know when you know and uh eventually this is how me and I me and my husband, my kid's dad uh like broke up for good. So I don't know if he found uh that there was this one night oh, fuck I'm not gonna say all of that ways. But even everybody loved Duval even since the beginning. Like his sisters was Duval's friends. My baby daddy's sisters was his friends. At the time I used to go see Duval while I was living with my baby dad. And his sisters would come along with me and we would have so much fun. We would eat, we would dance, we would, you know, have fun as friends, and then I would go back home. And they wouldn't tell him because they knew what he was doing to me, his own fam. No, sorry that I had to say that. I'm just sorry. They just didn't get in the middle of it. And they loved me. They respected me. And I respect them and love them for that always. Because they, you know. And, um, so this one day, we go home. He dro Deval drops us off back ho at home with his sisters. And they, we're eating. We're eating a burger. So his sister says, his sisters are like, are these, uh, this is not my burger. And the other sister was like, that is my burger. Deval bought me this. Deval bought me that. My baby daddy hears D Deval's name and he gets up like, Deval, like evil, he's drunk, he's been drinking, he's getting, he's like, he hears Deval's name. <gasps> Y'all all hell fucking broke loose. I remember, you know, fast forward, I remember, but like, I was standing on the porch, y'all, and he fucking kicked the shit out of me. He, re it was a long, long porch. It was a long porch. And I remember standing in the dark, like I walked out looking for him. I don't know what I was looking for him for. I walked in the dark. I walked all the way down to the porch. Y'all won't believe he ran from one side of the house all the way to the other side of the house and fucking fly kicked me. He fucking flew. He ran and then flew and fucking kicked me dead. Boom. I've never had the wind fucking blew out of me so bad in my fucking life. Yo, I swear to God, I thought I was going to die. I was like... And he walked away. He walked away while I was fucking gasping for breath. I've never in my fucking life, my fucking breath was taking the fuck out of my body. You hear me? Anyway, so that was the one time. And then maybe a few days later, same thing. I think he sees, he cheats on me or something. And I'm, I'm fucking fed up, y'all. I'm fed up with the girls. The girls, he's leaving him voice messages. He's doing what he's want, he wants to. He's effing over me. He's disrespecting me. He's being rude to me. He speaks to me. He's like, he's telling me shit. Like when I'm crying, he's like, Man, when me and you break up, I'm gonna have a bitch better than you. Like, I'm never gonna have a bitch that look anything less than you. Every bitch I have after you gonna look so much better than you. Man, I'm fucking hoes. Then he tells me, man, I was fucking two hoes. Man, they were pulling my dreads. He's laying in the bed with me telling me this. I was fucking two hoes, man. They were pulling on my dreads. He's drunk, okay? And he tells me that he had a, two, a threesome with two girls, how they was pulling his dreads and stuff like that. Told me, and I'm like, you know, I'm... I don't even remember what I was saying, y'all. I probably, I was hurt crying. Probably saying some after shit back, too. I just remember what he was telling me, and he's like, man, I'll never have no... <laughs> You'll never have no what? No what better than who? <laughs> and then end up marrying who? The fucking devil, Lucifer, his self? Not herself? Lucifer, his self? Because I got another story about that, um, Joan. I got another story about her. Another story time coming soon. Cause he just brought more havoc into my life when he married that devil. So, um, so yeah, y'all. So this night comes and he starts, he sees, yeah, I tell him, I'm like, that's why I'm gonna go by Duval. I'm gonna go by Duval. F you, I'm fucking done. I'm done with being abused. I'm talking back, y'all. I'm opening my mouth. He's throwing glass candles at me and everything. People. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go by Duvall. Y'all, he gets yeah. raging mad. I mentioned another man. He gets raging mad. He starts wet beating my ass. He comes, he has work boots on. Now, you know, if you work in, if you work in uh, construction, you know the steel, it's called steel toe boots. It's boots and it has little steel on the outside of it. He's fucking kicking me in my ankles. He's like, boom, boom. He's kicking me with these steel toe boots. Y'all, y'all never believe I have Jeremy in my hands. Six weeks old. Six week old Jeremy in my hands and he's beating me and Jeremy's ass. He's beating me and Jeremy's ass. In my six week old son and he's punching and he's kicking and he's punching and he's kicking with the steel toe boots. 
I'm screaming, y'all. Y'all never believe the god that the, or the, the man comes in, he opens the door, doesn't interfere. I fucking, by the time I get up, I'm like, why? Why did you watch him do that? Why the fuck would you watch him do that? Why would you watch him do that? Why did you not fucking get my son? He looks at me in the eye and he says to me, you told me not to get in y'all stuff anymore. You told me to leave y'all alone. Which is true. Which is true. I did. I said, you know, because we would argue, there's just so much fucking men in our relationship. Which I'm a girl. Why is all these men, why do so many men have to argue with me anyway? Why is a man threatened? Like, now that I think about it, I'm today is old. I was fucking 19. Why was so many grown ass men had to feel so like they had to like be so manly towards me or be so like, you know, why, why? I did tell him, but I'm like, but why did, I'm like, I've never been hit. My son is in my fucking hands. Why didn't you grab my son? I'm on the phone with my friend at the time, y'all. Her name is Dianca. She will vouch for me. I'm on the phone with my friend Dianca at the time. I call, she's hearing me get my ass beat. She read, y'all, she lives around the corner, in the same neighborhood around the corner, y'all. I, she scurred. She came because she heard me screaming on the phone and she ran in my fucking room like, like, you know, ran in my room with no fucking shoes on. And I was like, Renee! Like, you know, because she heard the panic. She came to save me, my friend from around the corner. Thank God, because I probably came to save me because she happened to be on the phone with me. I'm telling y'all, I was supposed to go through a lot of the shit, but God was with me. Oh, God was with me. I had to go through this stuff because I have never been who I am today. I am who I am today and I am an advocate for so many things and I'm able to help so many people today because of my, and if I had to go through that to help one soul, one soul, my job is done. I accept God, I'm here, I accept it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So don't feel sorry for me. I'm not, I'm not a victim no more. I'm not a victim, I'm not a victim. I don't feel sorry for myself. I don't think that I'm weak. I actually feel like that I'm very fucking strong. And I can tell you right now that losing me, he knows this. I know this was the biggest regret, the biggest mistake of his life. He knows that. He has said that. And that beside that point, he just wasn't meant for me. And um, let me continue the story. He ends up beating me and my son's ass. My ankle is big swollen. I cannot walk. I'm hopping around the house. All these men are still here. I finally call the cops because I'm done. I'm fed up. I call the cops. The cop is on his way. You'll never believe, y'all. This man, the guy that I was talking about earlier, they called me B-I-T-C-H, one of his friends. The one that's married now to the side chick. He fucking kidnaps my kids. My dad, my, the dad tells him, take my children and whatever. So I don't know what he thought. I don't know what he thought was going to happen. The cop, he knew the cops was on its way and stuff like that. I don't know why he would do that or why he thought that maybe that wouldn't get him in trouble. If the kid, like maybe he was, I don't know. I don't know. Why would he make his friend, his friend took my kids. Or was it just Jalen? Jalen. Because I think Jeremy was in the ambulance. Jeremy had to go. To the ambulance. I'm sorry, yo, my memory so Jeremy was six weeks, he's like 13 now. Um I don't know, I don't remember exactly how that ended up if he took both kids or just one child, but I remember frantically hopping on one thing, like, where's my child? I went, got up, she was gone, she was gone. He had this nigga take my child. I'm calling the cops, I'm like, my child is gone, my child is gone, my child is gone. Because Jeremy ended up having to go in the um, ambulance. Jeremy's Jeremy's skull was fractured. Jeremy's skull was fractured. He cracked Jeremy's skull at six weeks when he beat me and Jeremy. He cracked Jeremy's skull. I, I couldn't even like big swollen for a couple days. I couldn't walk for a very long time for like a week or two. I stayed in the hospital for three days with Jeremy. Didn't even check myself in. They was like, you have to admit yourself. And I couldn't admit myself in because I had to watch Jeremy. I had to monitor Jeremy. Jeremy couldn't eat for a whole day. The baby was fucking screaming because they had to run so many tests on him. They was like, he can't have no milk. He can't have no nothing. My baby is screaming out of hunger. A newborn baby. All they could have is his pacifier. They're running tests. They're running tests. They're showing me pictures of his skull. He has a crack in his fucking skull. And ever since then, y'all, 
Jeremy was taken off in the ambulance at that house. That was my last day at that house. And Deval, my husband, my current husband now, married for 12 years, came and picked me up that day. And we never, I never turned around. I never looked back. Mm -hmm. Ever since then, my husband has lifted me up. He has helped heal me. I have become very angry. I get very, I have PTSD. I get very, I, I have triggers. I feel like people is hurting me all the time. I feel like people is out to get me all the time. And my husband is very, very, very understanding with that is very gentle with me and God just knew what I needed God knew what I needed I needed a gentle man I need somebody to love me I need somebody to hold me to be the calm to my storm now I'm the crazy one go figure right I'm with the most gentlest man that God gave me we have beautiful children he's the most beautiful dad to my kids all of my kids uh, Jalen and Jeremy doesn't see their dad it's very strange and that's not because of me um, he, he wasn't there he wasn't there um and um now that he wants to be there after all of this i don't you're not allowed and my kids don't really know you like that and they yeah so yeah i just wanted to come and share that story with you guys because i i i've never really spoke about it in depth like that people were asking me all the time oh my gosh i didn't know that your kids had a different father i just wanted you guys to know the gist of the relationship and what happened and how it happened and where I'm at today and why I rejoice the way I rejoice today why I celebrate my life not my materialistic things if you guys know me you know that I'm all about inner happiness inner peace me making sure that I'm grounded no no matter what happens to me in life I'm very afraid of hurt I'm afraid of being left I'm afraid of, afraid of being neglected I'm afraid of losing people and, through, and, I, and that still happens. That happens for me every single time. And, and it affects me. And my PTSD affects me. And I just always have to remember to come back to me. I always, no matter how, I don't allow myself, thank God, so far, I don't allow myself to go as deep because I'm, like, I come back to me. I always remember, like, who I am, who this little girl is on the inside of me, who I fight for, and how I'm going to protect it till the day I fucking die. I'm going to protect till the day I die. You know why? Because she deserves that and I owe her that. I owe her that. And she didn't deserve that. So now I'm going to speak up for her. And I'm going to speak up for my kids and my husband. And as much as I can, I'm going to try to protect what's right and what's wrong. And I'm going to say when things are wrong. I'm going to say when I feel uncomfortable when it's wrong. I'm going to voice that. To make sure that I honor me, I honor my babies, I honor my husband, and I honor God first and foremost. I just want to say also thank you, God, <sighs> so much. I see so clearly. Um, I see it very clearly. I know that nothing was by accident. Uh, and I thank you for my bad times. I thank you for my good times. I thank you for the celebration. It's just so much more great. The celebration is so much more meaningful when it comes from hurt. You know, hurt people celebrate different. When you come from hurt, it hit different. When you come from, this is not supposed to happen. Like, when you, when you come from, this is just what I deserve. This is what, this is what life handed me. I don't, I come from this. I can't get that. I don't have a mom. I don't have a dad. I don't have a home. How am I going to, you know? And I ended up in California with my fucking with a big dream home, you know. And I'm more grateful than anything. I'm more grateful than anybody can ever imagine. Nothing is nothing is arrogance. Nothing is like look at me, look at me. It's like God, how, how like how, like how the fuck did I end up here? Like how did you? How the fuck did I just go from that to that? Like what happened in between you know of course I know what happened in between you know but uh, I did a story time before about my cousin who put me in jail because she I didn't tell her that I lost my virginity so she wanted me to tell her she put me in jail for some strange reason it happened the same exact way I woke up one morning and I felt something and I was like let me go do a story time and it's so uncomfortable. These story times are so uncomfortable for me because I'm scared. I'm scared that people may think that I have something against them and I don't. I've literally forgiven. I have. But it's my story. 
and it's not gonna change it made me who I am so how can I not tell you why I me why can I not tell you why I'm sitting here now like how can I not so every time I say something they're so offended everyone my husband's family everyone who I feel harmed me if you feel like I harmed you and I'm sure I'm not perfect I'm sure that I've hurt people in ways that I don't even understand make your video make your video and tell them tell them what I've done it's open. The internet is open to anyone. Tag me. I'll repost it. All I know is that I was very young. I was very vulnerable. I was very afraid. And all I wanted was love. I didn't have the capacity to hurt anybody else because I was hurt. I am the hurt. I'm the walking hurt. I walked. How can I hurt someone else? Or how can I, like, if I'm the one fighting for my life, you know, I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for my life. So how can I even be capable of really just, like, Hurting you when you purposely, you knowingly telling me what you're doing. You like doing that to me. You love seeing me fucking cry. You don't feel no emotion when I cry, you know? But yeah, I'm going to go because I want to feed my son. I'm going to go feed my son and I'm going to go to the rest of my family and then pretend this never happened. I come do this in the morning and I hide because I don't never, you know. And for those who ask me, and people ask me this all the time, I really don't like to cry in front of my kids. That's the gist of it. I don't like to cry in front of my family. But if you ever ask me, like, what if your kids see this video online? I, I, I tell my kids, I'm not against telling my kids what happened to me. I, my kids know my stories. I want them to know my story. And although it may seem hard, I'm not one of those type of parents to be like, oh, no, like, everything is so peaches and cream. It's fine. I went through fucking hell, and my kid is going to know that outside is hell. And they're going to know how to protect themselves. So, you know, if mommy, my mama went through that, she know. I didn't know the red flags. I didn't know what to do, right? I'll talk to these things about my kids. I'll talk to them about it, no problem. I told them, Jalen and Jeremy, I let them think their own thing. I don't talk bad about their dad to them. I allow them to feel how they feel. But like if they was to ask me one day, I'm going to tell them. And I have told them certain things that Jeremy was curious about. He asked me and I tell him. And I'm going to tell him the truth. Because he wants to know. And I don't want my daughters to like think that things is okay. You're going to recognize the story when some shit like this come up. And when I'm not here one day, maybe you'll have some things. That's one thing that I feel very sad about is that my mom really didn't leave me with anything. She kept me out of grown folks business, which is what all, everyone does. Not today, I don't feel like that's always a good thing because I wish I knew what my mom was going through to see how she handled like a fucking boss because she did. She took her four kids. She was by herself. She went from South Africa to the United States. She did what she had to do. She was struggling. But I wish today, my mom's not here as an adult. I wish I would have known her struggle. I want to know my mother's struggle. My mom's not here today. That's a different type of that's a different type of feeling. I don't care what society says about, oh, don't expose your child, don't tell your child. I'm telling my kids everything. Oh, I'm telling them everything. I gotta go. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I love you. And until next time. Oh, and before I go, you guys feel free to like uh, every time I post a story like this. I, um, I'm afraid, so I look for, uh, like, comfort in the comment section. So every time I do this, a lot of people tell me their stories and things like that. So, um, feel free to tell me your story down below, you guys, if you want to share anything or if you want to message me. Uh, well, maybe not message, because I just have so many. I'm just, you know, maybe you can try to go through a few of them. And just, like, if you want to share your experience with me, you're not alone, I understand. Um, although that I'm in a better position today, I'll never forget who I am. I don't forget who I come from. I will always be me. And, um, on the inside, and that doesn't have anything to do with materialistic things or money or positions or none of that, you know? I'm a human being like you. So, I would love to hear your stories. Makes me feel better. Not to say that it's a good thing, but at least I have some people to relate to, but... Love you guys. Give me a kiss before we go.